Here we go. Let's make it a good day. Chaska. Good morning, Chan Hassan. Good morning, Seattle. And good morning to you. Welcome to the Jason Show. I'm Jace. Please say hello to my sidekick sister from another mister in Frank's House of Fish, employee of the month, Kendall Mark. Hello. How you doing? We got all the fish. We got the cod, we got the salmon, we got the bluegill. We have everything. Got the things. Yeah. We have everything. How you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you today? I couldn't be better. I'm fine as frog hair. Thrilled to be here. Oh, that's good. Thrilled to be here. I'm thrilled to be with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Here's the deal. Um, we get unusual promo items here at the Jason Show, but this could be one of the craziest. Now, fans of the movie Dirty Dancing, definitely you all remember this scene when Johnny first met Baby. Look at this. What's she doing here? She came with me. She's with me. I carried a watermelon. Carried a watermelon. Well, guess what we got in the mail yesterday? Leo? We got a. A watermelon! Okay, can you say the line? Oh, I brought a watermelon? Okay. What? Okay. No, well, can she I tell says you? it the no, first no, time, we're done. and then we're she done. says it the second time. No, we're done. Can I tell you, audience, back to Leo, back, thank you. Audience, can I tell you, we rehearsed this more than anything we've ever done. We've rehearsed this. Ted, am I right on this? We talked about it. Leo, you were in the meet. Director Leo, did we not rehearse this like three times in our meeting? Yes, Jason, we did. Thank Leo, you. Leo, you liar! We talked about this more. I'm not joking. You had one <laughs> line. Okay, let's try it again. Uh -huh. Go back to me, Leo. You ready? Okay. We're going to give you another take here. <laughs> this is going Guess on. what we got in the mail yesterday from our network? <laughs> okay. okay. I, I can't. I, I just, oh, I literally. I'm sorry. It's, I carried the watermelon and then I want. God, you too. No, I swear okay. We're done. We're literally done. I got to tell you. I got to tell you. We were. I, we, Kendall and I were together on Sunday, and there was a delightful drag queen there. And and the the drag queen said, "Can I replace Kendall sometime when you fire her?" And I think we're just gonna have the drag queen on standby. I carried a watermelon. Okay. It's too late. <laughs> It's you want absolutely it? no. I don't Do want it. No, it. six feet, six feet, social distance. <laughs> Get over there. <laughs> Get over there. <laughs> I'll just hold it for the rest of the show. Okay. So that would be actually your punishment. <laughs> so the reason we're. <laughs> <laughs> do we ever really wonder why we don't win enemies? <laughs> well, we win enemies, but what, do we do we wonder why we this show doesn't in, win an Emmy? What does Patrick Swayze teach me how to move my hips? Keep eye contact. Okay, well, he's passed, but I mean, you know. <laughs> well, other than that. So, the 12th of never on that one. <laughs> Took a very dark there. turn. <laughs> <laughs> she sure is cute, isn't she? <laughs> Maybe like yeah. a baby. <laughs> okay, let's put the fruit down. Burp the baby. <laughs> let's put the fruit down. Okay, fine. <laughs> and I love that they go to a shot of me after that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be talking. The reason is, here's the deal. There's a method to our madness. We're actually going to be talking live to Twitch, you know, from Ellen, who hosts the new dance show, The Real Dirty Dancing, and that's coming up today at 1020. Do I get to keep that? Are you? Gonna no, you it? do not. We oh. that's uh, we can't keep any gift over fifty dollars. How about fifty pounds? I think that's, it's heavy. That's fine. She had one line today. Just, I just want everyone to be clear. She had one line today. Whoops. Leo, just roll the open. It's not going to get any better. Let's just go. Here we go. It's time for the hot dish, friends. Okay, first up, Whoopi really stepped in it yesterday on The View. I know you don't watch The View because you watch this program, but she outraged people when they were having a discussion about race and the Holocaust, and it didn't go well. Last night on Colbert, she tried to uh, clarify her comments. Look at this. But I thought it was a, a salient discussion because 
as a black person, I think of race as being something that I can see. So I see you and I know what race you are. And the discussion was about how I felt about that. I felt that, that it was really more about man's inhumanity to man and how horrible people can be to people. And we're seeing it manifest itself these days. But people were very angry and they said, no, no, we are a race. And I, I, I understand, I understand. I, I felt differently. I respect everything everyone is saying to me and I, I you know, I don't want to fake apologize. You know, I, I was, I'm very upset. So once again, don't write me anymore. I know how you feel. <laughs> okay, I already know. I get it. And uh, I'm going to take your word for it and never bring it up again. We have to take a quick break. So, stick not exactly an apology, but she explained where she was coming from. Mm -hmm. How about this? I've, look, we don't wade into these controversial waters very often. I think that's one of the reasons you like our program, but this was too big to ignore. But how about this? How about we just don't compare the Holocaust to anything? How about that? I have, I have a revolutionary idea. I have a, just a crazy, it's the same way that I felt. Remember when a couple stars about seven years ago, they went to Halloween parties in blackface? And I thought to myself, self, how about we just don't do that? Nothing good, nothing right, let's be clear comes from that. Why don't we just not refer to that? Why don't we just not bring it up? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, it just, I, I, I just don't understand it. And I thought her, her Twitter apology, and that might have been an apology she put out everywhere, but was a little bit more well-spoken than then she went on and apologized without apologizing again. Yeah. I think she just should have left it where it was. Uh, yes. Look, and to be fair, I don't think Whoopi comes from a bad place. No. I'm not going to do what's uber popular on Twitter. If you don't like somebody or you're in the other camp, you wait for them to fall mm -hmm. or trip and you annihilate them. I wouldn't want that done to me. I try not to do that on here. I'm not going to come on here and say she's the worst person on, on earth. I'm trying to give people the benefit of the doubt. I don't think we do that enough. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think she's coming from a bad place. She's just coming from a different perspective that has happened to offend a lot of people. Right. Next, let's lighten it up. The four-part Janet Jackson documentary aired this past weekend, and it was a big hit, huge on Lifetime and an, on an, uh, and A and E. More than three million people tuned in on night one, and trust me, that's really good. It's well above the cable networks what they usually get on a Friday night. Trust me. I started watching it last night, and. What I love about it is the access and, and executive producer and I, Jeff and I were talking about this. This isn't one of those things where the documentarians rely on file footage or stuff from networks. This was this is stuff from Janet. Now, there's always you also have heard me. You run the risk of when you handle your own autobiography or your own documentary, you, you tend to human nature. Uh, you tend to put the best foot forward. I don't think Janet did this. I think she is pretty honest about her life. Now, I, I must admit, I only watched, I know all four parts available. I'm gonna watch the rest tonight. Um, I thought I was, uh, I had a whole evening plan. You know how this is, friends. I had a whole evening plan. And then um, the, ev the evening went to the left when you thought it was going to the right, so I can only watch one hour. Um, but even in that, I found her to be revelatory when I didn't think she might be, because she's always very guarded. She's done very few interviews. If you think about it, she's you know appeared on Oprah a few times, on Letterman, but she doesn't do a lot of substantial interviews. Um, so I, I give her an A on transparency. Have you watched any of it? I don't mean to put you on the spot. No, I okay. haven't, but I do think when you said that how she's coming across with this and kind of letting it out, she has nothing to lose and she has nothing to prove at this point in her career, right? Like, because she's done everything. So it's like, here nothing. you go, here it is. She has nothing to prove. And right. again, I try to ring the Janet Bell as much as I can because she's been out of the main spotlight for so many years that unfortunately, youngins only know her as a punchline to a Super Bowl joke or connected to the term wardrobe malfunction. I find that sad to me because to me, to anybody Jeff's age, my age, in our 40s, that's a that's a asterisk on her record or on her career. I know Janet from Rhythm Nation. 
I know that when Janet, when when Rhythm Nation was announced, when when Rhythm Nation was released in stu in stores, I made my dad as we were coming home from Thanksgiving from Schaumburg, Illinois. I made him pull over to the Marquette Mall, much to his chagrin, because I wanted to buy that CD. That's how I know Janet, um, and I, I want youngins, and I hope this documentary reinforces how great she is and her place in music history. Because people always, rightfully, Michael has a place. Janet's right there. Mm -hmm. Janet's right there. Next in the dish, Peacock dropped the second teaser for the upcoming dramatic reboot of The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. It's just called Bel-Air. Ain't this what they've been waiting for? You ready? Uh. 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 Yo, who do that? Was it you? Get if you ain't about that murder game, nigga, You could have been killed. You know that, right? Where are we going? To the airport. You're gonna stay with your aunt and your uncle. What? Okay, another thing that I often say if you watch the show, if you're going to do a reboot, you better have a good reason. You know, if mm -hmm. it's a special effects-esque show, maybe the special effects have caught up to the creator's imagination. If you're going to do this, you're, you can't redo a comedic Fresh Prince because you're not going to do better than Will. No. But this, smart. Mm -hmm. Smart. It does look pretty good. Like, I think people who didn't love the original Fresh Prince, like... AK didn't grow up with it. This is You'd your generation. You'd still be interested yeah. in it. Yeah. You know? Did you watch this? Was, isn't this your generation a little bit? I watched Fresh Prince. It was a little before me, but I still watched it a lot yeah. growing up. Yeah. Oh, I know. Sorry. <laughs> Old. <laughs> Series uh, debuts in two weeks, and it, as I said, it reimagines a sitcom through a new dramatic lens on Will's complicated journey. There's a, my favorite word. We have a lot more to come. Go get some more coffee and meet me back here in two minutes. Back after this. Coming up next, an area cold case gets the 2020 treatment. Someone knows something. The disappearance of Jody Hoosentrude. Then, he danced his way into our hearts on Ellen. I'm Twitch. Now he's dirty dancing? Well, kinda. Twitch is joining me live to give a sneak peek at Dirty Dancing, the competition. And she's not dancing, but she is cooking. Stephanie Hansen is back with the tricks to making the best chicken wings in your air fryer. That and more when we return. In, in football news, did you hear the rumors that Tom Brady might be retiring? Yeah, I'm not sure it's true. I think it's probably just speculation. But if it were me, I probably would retire if it gave me more time to watch Emily in Paris. <laughs> So I really think for Tom right now, it's just a tough decision between balancing his career and relationships, sort of like Emily. <laughs> Let me break it down for you. This is a classic showdown between Emily's career and her love life. Early on, the O's were getting completely dominated by the X's. And there were a lot of X's, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I do not, no. Gabrielle, Matthew Cadeau, Timothy, Doug from Chicago, obviously. <laughs> Now Emily wants to go deep on a relationship with Gabrielle and to get ahead at work. But as long as Camille's blocking her, she's got to go through her progressions and check down to Alfie in the flat. Sure, it feels like a broken play and she's just dumping it off. But emotionally, she's making forward progress. Some more SNL from the weekend. Peyton Manning on Weekend Update talking about Emily in Paris. He got more great headlines than than William Defoe, the actual host, oh, rightfully so. It was so good. It was my favorite part, for sure. For I sure. Like Emily in Paris too. Yeah, I've never watched Emily in Paris. I need to watch it. You do. I mean, you can't go into it expecting Sex in the City. Just know that. Hold on, I'm being told I won't like it. But you like it. Executive producer Jeff knows. We basically share part well, of the brain. Don't watch it, because I don't want you to make fun he of gets, my love for it. He has the bigger part of the brain, just FYI. Just being very clear. You don't have to press the applause on that one. Speaking of late night and Peyton, last night on Fallon, Peyton joined Jimmy and talked about the sketch that had everyone laughing. Look at this. You
Colin just wanted to have you on to talk about football, and all you wanted to talk about was <laughs> Emily in Paris. Uh, I want to know, have you ever seen an episode of Emily in Paris? I've never seen an episode of Emily in Paris. Um, <laughs> not sure if I'm going to in the future. I feel like I know so much about it now, Jimmy. But I think I'm going to be asked to be in season three, like yeah. a big part. <laughs> Emily in Paris, if you do want to watch it, is available on Netflix. Hey, before we move on, I want to clear something. I just got a text from Alex, 1995. When I said about Whoopi, when I said about Whoopi, about let's forget about using the Holocaust, mm -hmm. not forgetting about it. Don't use it willy nilly, Alex Hopkins, 1995. I said, don't use it inappropriately. Don't invoke it inappropriately. If you're going to quote me, get it right, Twitter. Next in the dish, it's been a mystery for more than 25 years, the disappearance of TV news anchor Jody Husentrude. If you guys don't know, she was a 27-year-old Mason City anchor woman who went missing on her way to work uh, one morning. On Friday night, 2020 over there on ABC, profiled the case. And if you didn't see it, here's a little bit of the teaser, and we'll talk about it on the other side. There's a car keys laying on the ground. There's an earring over here, and there's some paperwork here. Red high heel shoes. We've got a problem. A 27-year-old news anchor named Jody Husentrude. Thanks for joining us. I'm Jody Husentrude. Jody was this vibrant, young news anchor. Beautiful and in the limelight. Experts say a stalker can feel especially close to a newscaster because they're in our living rooms every day. People think they know you personally when really you may not have met them. Jody did feel unsafe. She reported that she was being followed by somebody. An anchor woman had been abducted and disappeared. She was my best friend. I thought we had the guy. I honestly did. There's something definitely wrong with the story. Do the math. There was a stunning revelation. It made my jaw drop. Someone knows something, and someone is going to say something. I have a person that I believe is responsible for Jody's disappearance. I, I watched this last night, uh, and it's it was odd because you know we here in the Twin Cities, there's so many weird connections. You know, we're part of the media, um, and here at Fox Nine. We know a couple of the players in this mystery. Uh, Caroline Lowe, uh, who's referenced and interviewed throughout, is an investigative journalist who a lot of you, if you live in the Twin Cities, you remember her from her years at WCCO. I was lucky enough to work with Caroline. You know, I started at WCCO in 97, and um, she has been on the Jody Who's in True case from the very beginning. Robin Wolfram, who worked with Jody, um, uh, was friends with Jody, uh, sat in this very studio. She was our new, the newsreader for the first iteration of our morning show, uh, Good Day Minnesota. Anyway, so this hits really close to home for so many folks for so many reasons. Um, the, the, the positive of this, and I'll try, you know, lead with the positive. At the very end of the 2020, um, one of the investigators uh, that we've had on our show, Jeff, please refresh me with her name. Maria. Uh, Maria uh, was on uh, our show. And she, through the Freedom of Information Act, requ uh, requested some police records. And within those records, she found another police report from a woman, I believe a couple months before Jody went disappear, that before Jody went missing, that said that this woman was being stalked by an individual in a white truck. Then you look back and you remember that Jody filed a report that she was being followed by somebody in a white truck while she was jogging. And unfortunately, so you think, oh, here's a good lead. And like so many leads in this case, then you find out that it's, uh, the, the, the report is incomplete. Mm. So there's no record of who made that report back in the 90s. And you're like, no. So, and every time that, you know, I get it's a television show, I, I got a little frustrated with 2020 because before they went to every commercial break, the announcer dramatically would come on and say, the case takes a giant turn when we return. Well, we know it really hasn't, unfortunately. Right. Uh, the leads are still coming in, especially in this age of true, true crime podcast, which, my goodness, I hope it leads to something. Uh, but unfortunately, it's, it's, we're right kind of where we were just a few years ago. As far as just a special in general and how they put it together, did you like it? Or knowing so much of the story ahead of time? 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's well done. It's, you know, I because I hate a cheap looking documentary. I immediately turn those off. This was really well done by ABC. Amy Robach, I don't know why she was there, but it was good to see Caroline because she has great perspective. Um, I, I, yeah. Was there anything revelatory that we here in the Metro don't really know? Right. No, unfortunately, it didn't move. It didn't move the, the ball down the field. Uh, but I, I hope for people that aren't familiar that maybe know something, know somebody that had a white truck in 1995 that was a little creepy Carl. Who knows what this will spark? Mm -hmm. That's why I love it. That's why you should watch it. It's available on Hulu. Just look up uh, 2020. Next in the dish, what is the best show ever made? YouTube TV put out a new study that answers that question. Cracking the top 20 are some surprises. Big Brother came in at 20. Okay, no. Bob's Burger was 18th. What? No. Sopranos was 13th. Okay. Supr uh, the Simpsons came in at 9th. Mm. The Office was 6th. Mm. Frasier was 5th. Three's Company. <laughs> Coming knock on our door. Was 4th. Game of Thrones was 3rd. Seinfeld came in at 2nd. And Friends was declared the greatest television show of all time, according to the poll. Three out of four respondents will stop and watch their favorite show, no matter how they are feeling. I'm with, that's the only thing I agree with. Mm -hmm. I like a lot of those shows on the top 10. Is Three's Company number four? No, no. There are a couple surprises too, the things that were not included compared to the things that were. Yeah. But People like what they Look, like. I love a beer at the Regal Beagle, but no. <laughs> it's a reference. 30% of you get. Maybe 17. Dirty Dancing is one of the most iconic movies of the 80s. And tonight on the FOX, a celebrity-filled spinoff is going to debut. Look at this uh, preview clip. Welcome, welcome. Yo, I'm Twitch. This is the real Dirty Dancing. Five years ago, they filmed this iconic movie right where you are standing. And we are so wow. excited to go back in time and relive it all. Yeah, yeah. And this time, you are the cast. Let's do it. Wow, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> that is a clip from The Real Dirty Dancing. And like I said, it debuts right here on our lovely network, the FOX. Please welcome to the show the host of The Real Dirty Dancing, Stephen Twitch Boss. Hi, my friend. What's up, y'all? What's this up? Is, Good morning. You know, when you have a show like this, you're not supposed, and you know, with you, with Ellen, you're not supposed to fan out and geek out, but I don't care. I'm going to be real. I'm a huge fan, uh, and it's a thrill to have you on the show. So this is, this is really fun for me. Uh, oh, man. What did uh, you, thank you very much. It's great to be here. Thank you for having me. Twitch, I know, you know, opportunities come your way, and, and, and you're like, okay, I'm going to do this. No, this doesn't really fit in what I want to do. I got to ask, when you saw the pitch or you got the call or, or email, however it came to you, and you saw the words real dirty dancing, what was your first honest reaction? <laughs> My first honest reaction was just like, what what network is this going to be on? <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and of course it's Fox. You know it's going to be Fox, Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Cuz I seen I seen some real dirty dancing in my day for sure. Uh, no. <laughs> but, at the, but also after get, after getting into it a little more and, and finding out what it was, Honestly, man, it was such a full circle moment for me, you know, because listen, just like I'm sure a lot of other people that love this movie and love dance, this movie just connects in, in so many different ways. And what a great way to celebrate 35 years of this movie uh, other than the way that we're doing it right now. Dirty Dancing taught me a lot about um, myself as a dancer. Like there's a lot of Swayze that I picked up. Um, during my education, uh, my education dance, you know, some of these some of these shows, you know, Twitch have this really convoluted concepts and even the viewers like, what is this about? I have to say, and I'm not just saying this because you're our guest. I love this concept because this could have went real wrong. Can you tell the folks how this is going to work? Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. So what we have is we have eight, we have eight celebrities that are paired up. 
and we basically put them through the biggest dirty dancing boot camp that you that you could go through where they have to not they have to recreate scenes they also have to recreate moments and of course they definitely have dance performances and at the end of this we find our best baby and Johnny and the great thing about this is that like our cast is from all different ver various walks of life and we're not just looking for, of, of course, we're looking for incredible dancing, but we also we also are looking for that feeling that we got um, that Baby and Johnny gave us. You know what I mean? And the great thing about our cast is that you know everybody brings their own unique perspective and take to who that is. Uh, I love it. I can't wait. I could talk to you forever. They're already wrapping us. I can't wait to watch uh, continued success, Twitch. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, man. Much love to y'all. Thanks. It's great talking to y'all. Great talking to you. The Real Dirty Dancing debuts tonight right here on Fox. If you're watching this from other cities, check your local listings. We're going to take a break. We'll be back right after this. Oh, I love them. <laughs> oh, there's the watermelon. I carried a watermelon. Welcome back to the show. I know just like uh, we do at my house, we're counting down. The Super Bowl is less than two weeks away. And if you're looking to cook some wings for the big game, because we're only legally allowed to say Super Bowl once, have you thought about the air fryer? Have you thought about it? Well, she was a skeptic before, but now she's becoming an air fryer believer. Please welcome back to the show our foodie queen, our fried food North Star, the one and only Stephanie Hansen. Hi. Okay, now Hansen, Steph, we have to acknowledge, we talked about this in the meeting today. I just, we just need you to acknowledge, because we have the tape to prove it, this has been a journey for you. You know what I'm going to say. You were not a believer of the air fryer. You made fun of executive producer Jeff for his love affair with the air fryer. When and what turns you around, dear friend? It's so true, I did. I got an air fryer actually from your best friend, Jen. Hers broke and they sent her a new one and she gave me the old one and said, maybe your husband can fix this because he's kind of handy and he did. And so I have this Cuisinart, it's like an air fryer, toaster, convection oven thing. It's so big, we keep it in the garage. We don't even allow it in the kitchen, but I have started to use it a little bit more because they're so popular and I even bought an air fryer cookbook, I'm embarrassed to say, but yeah, I've been experimenting. You know what I love? The, my favorite part of that whole story is Jen giving you a broken item. <laughs> yep, and me taking it and like, yes, it's a, it's, it's a lovely air fryer, but it's very big. I mean, it's like way bigger than a toaster oven. Okay, so today, now you've come around you now embrace it, you love it. I personally love mine. What are we doing today? Are we doing wings? Yeah, because everyone is like, oh, air fryer chicken wings, air fryer chicken wings. So I did a little like research and development <laughs> and you. I've done wings four ways. So these are the baked wings that I do in the oven. They're crispy, they're delicious. I have perfected this recipe. I showed it on your show a couple years ago and that recipe is on my website. And to be honest, if you need to make wings for a party, you can't really do them in the air fryer because you don't have enough space. Yeah. So you do need a good baked crispy wing recipe for your oven and I got you covered. But then I was like, okay, you air fryer people, how are you doing this? <laughs> and there was a lot of different tech that came up. Yeah. So I'm gonna tell you about what I actually did. So these wings, and I just wanna show you my notes cause I did this at six in the morning. These are my little post-it notes. So these are overnight, you put them in like a Ziploc bag and you shake them with salt and baking powder and then you air fry them and they're pretty dry when you take them out of the refrigerator and you put them in your air fryer. And again, I have a big air fryer. I don't have a small one. If you have a small round basket, you need to line the uh, wings up like little soldiers in there. But with mine, it's big. So I laid them down and I can do about 14 to 18 at a time. So this is one batch, but these are totally air fried wings for 20 minutes at 400. And then I tossed them with hot honey, hello, 
and a little butter and a little Frank's hot sauce. And I have to say, these were the best ones. Really? They were. Mm -hmm. Better than your, your Stephanie Hansen legendary tray baked ones. Yes, but then it kind of started to go off the rails, Jace. As because it, someone as, else. What, wait, wait, what do you mean? An endeavor of yours went off the rails? What? It did, because again, I'll just show you my little note. Someone said, oh, we put ours in the Instant Pot for five minutes, and then we air fry them for 10 minutes, and you get like a great crispy dry rubbed wing. So if you can see these, they're great, they're crispy, they're dry rubbed, but they're dead. Like, <laughs> They're so like they have no fat in them because of putting them in the instant pot for five minutes first. They like rendered out all the fat and I'll eat them because I can't stand to let food go to waste. But they're just so dry. <laughs> so you think I'm done? I'm not done. Uh, no, I, I know you're not place. done. No, go ahead. I woke up at six o'clock in the morning, friend. So these well, let's do this. Were... Wait, Steph, let's do this. Let's do this. Hold on. Don't put that down. I don't I want people to stay tuned. What is she holding? You're going to have to stay tuned. Part two of Air Fryer Chicken Wing School with Stephanie Hansen when we come back. Back in a moment. I love it. <laughs> oh, the dirty dancing watermelon. Slash Kendall's replacement. Uh, welcome back. We're talking uh, live to our foodie queen, Stephanie Hansen. Uh, now, uh, Steph, we're going to continue with chicken wing air fryer school. Now, you've done several varieties, as you told us. You just showed us two. What's the next one? Okay, so this is the third one, and they were pretty good. They're dry rubbed again, but I didn't have any prep on them, so I didn't shake them in the baking powder or the salt. I just dried them like I took them out of the fridge you got to pat the wings dry that's a really important part to getting crispy skin and then I tossed them in uh here's the deal spice company's wing seasoning and they're pretty good they're not like overly dried out like the ones that I did in the instant pot first so if you had like a good dipping sauce I think these would be pretty good but I'm gonna just still go back to if you're making wings for more than one or two people these baked wings are they're not as easy because you got to um, rub the sauce on halfway and flip them. But if you have a lot of people, you got to do the crispy baked oven wings. If you only have a small group, you can do the overnight baking powder salt and then cook them in your air fryer for 20 minutes of 400 and then shake them in butter, hot sauce and hot honey. And really, these were pretty spectacular. I'm not going to lie. Is that basic? So the air fryer, it's again, it's surprising me. I like it. What do you, okay, before we move on, what are, now that you're a believer, what, what else are you, because I know what I, I rarely turn my oven on anymore. Like yesterday, we got Spitz, um, the Mediterranean place, a little like That's Euros. That's so good, yeah. And we had to deliver it, and it's always a little cold. Um, not throwing shade, but it's just, you know, by design. Yeah, it's so, delivery food. It's delivery food. So I always throw it in the air fryer, and it's delicious. I love my air fryer. It is the most used appliance in my house. What else do you love it for? Okay, I'm, I'm still warming up to it because I'm very fond of my oven. But salmon. <laughs> Just like salmon at eight minutes is really easy, and it's perfectly done. Also, Brussels sprouts in the air fryer. Sweet potatoes are really good in the air fryer. I'm not a big frozen food person that which is hilarious because my I have two freezers full of food right now but I don't buy like nuggets and yeah pizza rolls and that kind of stuff so I think if you have kids air fryers are amazing chicken breast just you know if you need like a quick breast of chicken for a salad or something like I would go throw that on the grill everybody else is putting it in the air fryer so Th it's tomato tomato this is how much I love you it's, this reminded me of when Oprah went camping for the first time and they asked her what her favorite camping food was and she goes, I brought sea bass, uh, which no one brings sea bass to camp. I asked Stephanie Hansen what she puts in the air fryer and the first thing out of her mouth is salmon. God, I love you. Um, hey, we have, we have one minute. Uh, we yeah. You talked about this on, uh, on your program, uh, The Weekly Dish, with your buddy Stephanie March. She wrote a wonderful article in MSP Mag about why and how, why it's so important once again to help local restaurants. You have 45 seconds, the floor is yours. 
Yeah, if you don't feel comfortable going into a restaurant, please do take out or buy gift cards. January in Minnesota is hard because it's typically, we've had two weeks of below zero weather. So the restaurants slow down a little bit, but many of our folks have mask mandates. It is, they're still struggling with employment. It's really hard out there for restaurants right now. And I've been to some of our best restaurants in town in the last couple of weeks and they're half full. Yeah. So if you love a place, please support it now more than ever. They need one last push here to get us to the spring. And hopefully we'll see some COVID in the rear view mirror as we move forward. But these restaurants are really struggling to stay together, stay open. And we have so many, we have such a great restaurant scene here. I'm just devastated that we're gonna go backwards 10 years. Yeah, and people can feel however they want about leaders and city and policies, but the restaurants are separate. Sometimes they don't even want, they don't like the, with the, the rules. So don't blame them, support them if you want them sticking around on the other side of this, so. They're small businesses. Like we yep. just have to, if we want these small businesses in our towns, we have to support them. Absolutely, I support you. The great Stephanie Hansen, everyone. I love you. For all of Stephanie's segments and news, head to her website, stephaniesdish.com. We'll be back after these words. Back after this. Can you define a circumstance of bullying? Sounds silly, but I made, you made shrimp the other day, right? You asked if I wanted some. I was like, wow, she's being really nice. I'm going to take some shrimp. Me and Eliza make some shrimp, and I'm like, hey, let me exchange the offer. Let me see if these girls in the hot tub want some shrimp. I do so. I go out. No one even turns to Does say, Does this sound like bullying to you? Please, Elizabeth. No one turns back to even say, just, Shanae, no, thank you. No one turns back but Mara. This is what I'm talking about. No one's acknowledging me when you're around. You don't acknowledge me. I wasn't me. outside just, when you offered people Elizabeth, shrimp. you were in the hot tub. You were in the hot tub. I was in the hot tub once, and it wasn't uh, that day. That's actually not true at all. OK. I was up inside the house. After I ate, I went upstairs and I showered. Elizabeth. What does it have to do with where I was? Because First of all, you're no, lying. You said you were up. <laughs> what? And and you realize we're talking about No, shrimp, I'm, right? I'm not done. I come over to OK. I Between the, the melee at the Golden Corral in Philadelphia and that, I weep for humanity. Shrimpgate continues on The Bachelor. It's Shanae versus Elizabeth. <laughs> it continues. It's Shanae versus Elizabeth with a Z. Not Liza with a Z, Elizabeth with a Z. Uh, was Elizabeth in the hot tub at the time of the crime? <laughs> there are so many questions left unsolved. After Shrimpgate came to a dramatic conclusion, Clayton and the ladies hit the road to the love capital of the Southwest, Houston. <laughs> and that means it's time once again for 17% of the country loves Ted. Joining us now from Shrimp Headquarters is Ted. Ted, um, I'm sorry, Jumbo Shrimp Cocktail Headquarters. <laughs> Ted, is this for, can I speak for the audience here? Yes. Is this for real? It, sadly, it is for real. And it was a to be continued episode from last week when we had Shrimp Gate part one, you know, with the hot tub and the stuff. And then this was Shrimp Gate part two. And it was, and it was like the first hour of the show. And you're like, this can't be real. So you've got, and then it came down to the rose ceremony and you've got, Shanae versus Elizabeth, and it's like, Shanae's the crazy, like, well, I don't want to throw that word out there, but she's insane. <laughs> and Elizabeth is like this innocent bystander, and he picks Shanae. I can't. I can't. And the networks wonder why everyone's going to streaming. Seriously. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's how it got, that's how, so I just want to be clear for the audience, that's how Shrimpgate got resolved, right? Shrimpgate got resolved. The entire house was on Elizabeth's side and Clayton sided with Shanae. See, when, to me, I worked at Red Lobster, Shrimpgate meant something entirely different to me. <laughs> it was when the all-you-can-eat shrimp special went haywire. Yeah. Okay, so they go to Houston and Rachel got the first date. Yeah, so Rachel got the first date and they went horseback riding and the horse, horses took them to a random family's backyard barbecue. And so here they are, and they're like, can we join? And they are like, oh, sure. Oh, that, they didn't know those people? They just said they stumbled upon a barbecue. Uh, I, 
And then, you know, he's telling them, it was almost like me telling the art lady yesterday about my squirrel. He's telling random dude who's grilling stuff about this woman and his quest for love. And the guy's like, uh, looks done. <laughs> How'd you like your burgers? <laughs> um, now, Ted, on my sheet, my handy sheet here, I want to make sure that you type this out right, okay? May I read it to you? Sure. sure. The group date involved some tackling. Yes. It was the Bachelor Bowl, part four or something. They went, they played football, tackle football against each other, and Shanae was on this date, and they just took her out, and it was like, it was kind of a bloodbath out there. But, it, but anyways, so it was, Marlena here is an Olympian, so she just destroyed everyone. And so, so Marlena's team wins. Okay. okay? And, the, you know, the, the prize at the end of this is the team that wins gets to go on the uh, cocktail portion of the date, and the losing team has to go home. Well, uh, they did that. Shanae was on the losing side, and she said, I'm not going to go home. But before she did that, the women were like, uh, Clayton, you really got to gotta send her home. She's not there for the wrong, she's there for the bad reasons, the wrong reasons. She comes into the date. He starts making out with her. He forgives her. Take a look. Oh, sorry. Trust me. I know I have him. The way he like looks at me, like I just feel that like he does like me. So these girls, like they should be scared. I think I'm, I'm kind of winning a little bit. Obviously. I don't want drama, but I'm not going to go down with girls talking What the f are you doing here? Genevieve and Sierra, keep my name out of your mouth. Wait, wait, wait. Here. Why did she even come here? Are you kidding? Oh my God! It's Shanae's show, not The Bachelor. It's like Kendall with the watermelon earlier. She threw the trophy. Yeah. Okay. Ted, thank you. <laughs> 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 the Bachelor on ABC.com. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Oh my goodness. How does that show stay on the air? Right, audience. We better get that down. I don't know how sturdy that thing is. I pulled it out of a garbage can, so yeah. It's time for the world's shortest segment. <laughs> it's not a joke. I, I did. It's your chance to become a Jason Show VIP. We call it JVIP. Head to fox9.com slash JVIP. Upload a picture and tell us what you like about the show. Three days a week, we'll feature JVIPs on the show. And if you get featured, you're going to win a Jason Show mug. Plus one viewer will win the monthly grand prize. Look for our first weekly winner tomorrow. And I know a lot of you have said it's not working. It is. I promise. I tried it. JVIP on the slash. We'll be back after this. Welcome back. Say the line. You get one more try. Say okay. it. I carried a watermelon. Oh, she did it. She did it. The show's <laughs> over, but she did it. You know, it's time for the surprise goodbye. Roll it, Leo. <laughs> we have no idea what the story is until right now. Today, a cat, today, a cat in Massachusetts that shares its that shares its feelings on snow. Coco's owner took it for a walk after this weekend storm and listened to how the cat responded. Hey, Mama. What are you whining about? Whoa. Okay, come on. Let's go back in. <laughs> you don't seem happy. <laughs> Okay, oh. Mama. You don't seem happy. There's a lot of snow. You guys got. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> we gotta go tomorrow. McCray from Big Brother will join us. I can't read the teleprompter, I'm crying, to talk about the new season of Celebrity Big Brother. That and more tomorrow. But if you're watching and you're a kid that's being bullied, go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you're doing it wrong. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Oh, that was fantastic. <laughs>